The Cathedral of St. Paul uh, was established in 1915 and was actually the first Episcopal Cathedral in the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, St. Paul's Parish was started in the early 1800s and the first choir of men and boys was formed in the late 1800s and in that choir was Harry T. Burley who was born and raised in Erie, baptized in St. Paul's Episcopal Church here, became a chorister um, and later was buried from this cathedral. And ironically, it was one of the very first years that the, the current children's choir that we have, that is now 25 years old, it was one of the first things that they sang for was for the reinterment of Harry T. Burley. Um, so this cathedral has quite a legacy uh, and so quite a few dignitaries and a lot of historical significance. And music has always played an important role uh, here at the cathedral. As you read back um, in historical documents, it's often commented on of the fine music and the, the strong congregational singing and the importance that uh, music played in the role of St. Paul's Parish and now in the last 100 years as St. Paul's Cathedral. The uh, choral tradition in the Anglican Episcopal Cathedral tradition is, is first of all about the worship of God and that doesn't need much justification beyond itself but it's about the worship of God and it enriches the worship of God by including children and that enriches everyone's experience uh, of worship and then for those children I think about how it forms them uh, not only in the tradition but their relationships with each other and with other people and then as they grow older I've seen children who who become deep people of faith as adults, uh, shaped and formed by having sung in a choir like this, and others who, who may not, but it still is inside of them. Those, those words that they sang when they were a young person become a part of who they are for the rest of their lives. And I started at a really young age, and when I first started, I didn't really know how to read music or anything, and everyone starts out that way. I started when I was, I think, seven or eight. Um, it was in second grade. I'd never been to a music class. I'd never taken any instrument. I came here, and throughout the eight or nine years that I've been here, I have learned a lot. We sing the national anthem probably like two to three times a year at different places, and it's really fun when like we sing at the Bayhawks game for the national anthem and then I'll go to school the next day and my friends will be like, oh, I saw you sing with your choir and you guys were amazing. I, I'm kind of sad when people say they don't have the time to do at least kids choir because it's only an hour and a half. That's only a tiny bit of your day and there's so much to learn, it's really worth your time. We've been able to go to places like Washington, D.C. and sing at the cathedral and we all like rent a big coach bus and we all really bond together and we go to Cleveland every year and there's just lots of traveling so we really get around. The first choir of men and boys began in 1885 and about 25 years ago is when our current choir of boys and girls was, was started. We have boys and girls singing um, as soon as they can begin to read words well. That can be around age six, age seven, age eight, whatever it is for that particular child. Girls may sing through high school and boys until voice change. Uh, boys are then invited to go into the Cathedral Choir of Men and Women as a tenor or bass if, if they so choose. Children come from all over the community. They, you do not have to be an Episcopalian. You do not have to be a member of our cathedral. You can have your own church or no church affiliation at all. When my sister and I started here, neither of us belonged to this church. And probably about half of the choir belongs to this church. So it's really nice to just have people from everywhere coming together to make music. We only require two Sunday mornings a year to participate in our cathedral service. So children can participate in their own church and just come here two Sundays a year. The choir season starts in August uh, with a week of choir school. It's sort of like boot camp for singers. Kids come uh, all day long from Monday through Thursday and they work uh, in the full group learning music for the new year. And then we break up into small groups and they learn individual skills. They work on note reading, rhythm reading, sight singing, all sorts of musical things. We also uh, have a lot of fun activities. We have some excursions and field trips during the week. We end the week with a service project um, that the whole group takes part in cooking breakfast for our food pantry guests. 
and serving them pancakes and sausage. Um, my fondest memories with Enquirer would probably be uh, the summer camps that we used to have here for a week. It was usually in August. Um, all of us would get together and Sharon would plan different activities for us to do, you know, amongst singing music and everything. And um, since we didn't always regularly meet all summer, it was nice to get to see everybody again, like right before we went back to school. And that was always really fun for me. So we do a lot of fun things and amidst uh, some very serious work. The children's choir primarily sings by themselves. Uh, they sing what's known as the treble part in music, what sopranos would sing as adults but they also join with our Cathedral Choir of Men and Women. So they have a chance to learn repertoire written specifically for young voices, as well as repertoire written for adult groups. So they have a wide variety of what they learn uh, in choral music. In our services, they will sing by themselves, but they also sing uh, with the adults. Our biggest and most popular service, I think, would be our service of lessons and carols, uh, either during Advent or Christmas. It's an afternoon service. It begins in dark, we have candlelight, and it's based on the, the famous service from King's College, Cambridge, where the chorister begins with a solo of Once in Royal David City, a very coveted solo that they audition for quite a few weeks leading up to that. So they get to experience morning worship, uh, evening worship, uh, we sing concerts, sometimes with instrumentalists, sometimes with organ. So there's a wide variety of musical and liturgical experiences that they have. We have uh, some singers in our current cathedral choir who began as choristers in the children's choir, visiting parents uh, over Christmas um, or Easter or some through the summer. They call me and they come back and they sing with the choir. Even though we live, you know, I live in Buffalo, you live in South, South Carolina, Carolina, D.C., here, <laughs> but we still, you know, when we come back together, it's like nothing has changed yeah. in the past seven years that we haven't seen each other, so you really form Long really right, tight bonds with the people in choir, and ones that will last for the rest of your life. Participation in the choir has, has led um, a lot of our young singers onto a, a path of lifelong participation in music and worship. Uh, participation in our choir often leads to some opportunities that uh, our children would never have otherwise. We were invited to be a part of a recording of a world premiere opera, which they sang when the opera was premiered here in Erie. When the recording was going to be made, uh, we were invited to participate in that. So the children got to to see what that whole experience was with the Erie Chamber Orchestra, professional soloists hired from around the country, um, and our children's choir in a two-day recording session. You will get an excellent basis of musical education um, and meet people who you will still be friends with after many, many years. If you, if you stick with it, it really is worth so much. It's one of the most important things, I think, that I've done in my life. If you like to sing, this is the right place to be. Um, if you're interested in, in any kind of faith, in this faith or in your own faith, this is a great place to be. Um, if you're interested in community, you know, kids your own age, kids a little older, kids a little younger, this is a great place to be for all of that. Um, anybody with an interest in singing or church music should join. Um, I'm a firm believer in praising the Lord and worshiping the Lord. So just for that alone, um, it's worth it. Well, I started in 1991, and I've actually been in the choir since then. Um, I graduated from the kids' choir into the adult choir when I was in high school. And just the, the feeling of community and family and um, knowing that years later we can all get back together and, and talk about the fun stuff that we've done over the years, and, and everybody know that. If you don't have a strong music program in your school, or if you're not necessarily going to be taking a lot of private violin lessons or private piano lessons, but you really do want to have a solid musical training, um, you know, this is the place where you can really find that. And among community and learn with your friends how to read music. So I can't emphasize that enough. We hope that in the next 100 years of the cathedral, we continue to have young people participating in the music making. And that is something that they can then take with them throughout the rest of their lives.